Welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I help private practice owners align their business back with their soul's calling, with their big vision and with their soul's purpose. Unlike other private practice coaches, I've traveled the world in search of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, education and information so that you can have the transformation that your soul desires and needs so that you can up level your business. How much fun is this? I love it so much. Guys, if you're not already a member of the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group, please check out the show notes. I would love for you to be there. In the meantime, thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday and welcome to another episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast. I'm really so thankful that you're here. Um, We're at 12,500 downloads now. So um, I love, 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 love that um, you're so loyal and I really want to honor you for sticking with me. I hope that you're getting lots of value out of these podcasts. And listen, if you only hear one podcast today or one podcast this week, let it be this one because this one is going to be truly transformational for those of you who are ready for a shift. For those of you who are open to change, today's podcast episode is for you. For those of you who have, you know, maybe you're in a stage of thinking about doing something differently, but you're not quite there yet, what I would suggest you do is download this episode and, you know, bookmark it so that you can come back to it a little bit later Uh, when you're ready. (laughs) Uh, I also want to take a moment to welcome our new listeners and new subscribers as well. I'm so pleased that you're here and also I'm pleased that you're loving the new format for the show notes. Um, I can tell that it's resonating a little bit more than usual because I'm getting more click-throughs. So (laughs) that's fantastic. And if there's ever any information that you need, um, don't hesitate to reach out. You know, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, Just before we get started, though, I do want to read something out to you if I can find my um, phone. Here we go. Okay, so listen to this. I received this late last night uh, from a former client who um, had coaching with me and it was just quite out of the blue and she says hey Brooklyn it's been a while and I thought I'd just touch base and let you know how things are going I now have consistent EAP referrals um, both new telephone ones and online sessions and pretty much have the two time slots allocated booked out each day I'm now seeing a few private clients too which I really enjoy and I love the face-to-face time I've now also got my DVA Medicare number so I can provide support to veterans. I have been really busy with the most people of four in one day, which is just amazing. And I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for providing guidance and support whilst I have been setting up my new private practice. I couldn't have done it without you. And I'm so glad that I signed up for your program. So I just love it, (laughs) as anybody does, I imagine, (laughs) when you get nice feedback. And um, I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's also just so nice for you guys to hear about other people's experiences, you know, not just from me, but from other people who I get to work with. Um, But there are also some people who are kind of um, stuck in inertia or they're stuck in indecision or they're stuck in procrastination. They kind of know that they want some help. um, but they get in their own way. And today what I want to do is give you a process um, for working through any fear. It doesn't have to be related to your private practice, but this is a private practice podcast, so I'm going to link it back to that. But you could absolutely write down the process that I'm going to share with you. Um, and what I would encourage you to do is perhaps when you have some quiet time um, during the week, sit down with it and just allow yourself to go through it. Even if you're not worried about anything in particular now, um, you know, I'm sure I could trigger something in you. <laughs> like I could suggest, hey, why don't you come and sign up for this VIP day? It's only $20,000 <laughs> and I really think you should do it. Um, be interesting to see what comes up for you if something like that was suggested. That's what I mean by that kind of anxiety, that kind of fear. I'm not talking about trauma or anything like that. Just talking about fear with the, with the business and how you can get out of your own way. Because here's the thing, um, when I'm working with women, 
and we have, you know, our initial conversation. A lot of the time, uh, some of them will say to me things like, you know, I really want the help, but... (laughs) And it's so interesting and I love coaching them through it because to have a really beautiful shift and a really beautiful breakthrough um, in that conversation is so impactful and so powerful. And that's my joy. That's what gets me up in the morning, helping you guys have shifts. But, you know, there's always one or two people that just really want to stay enrolled in their fear. They want to stay enrolled in their, I can't because, or but this, or there's, there's some kind of block. And so I guess, you know, just as a woman trying to help other women, my heart goes out to these women who are so trapped by their own um, defaults, by their own fears that I thought it might be helpful to do an episode that gives you an approach that you can start to play with, um, that you can use to support yourself when it comes to Um, you being aware of any of those fears coming up for you in business. Okay, so let's get on with it. So as I mentioned, this comes up sometimes because, well, as you know, like I've been doing these, um, having these conversations, I was going to say doing these calls, that's not very good English, is it? I've been having lots of conversations recently with women who are wanting mentoring or supervision or coaching or even to enroll in the class. Um, But the class isn't open for enrollment yet, but they're interested in enrolling in the class. And then when we um, talk to them, uh, what's coming through for some, not all, is, yeah, this big wall goes up when they hear about um, the money investment. And as I've said to you before, I don't think it's ever money that's the issue. I think what's happening is that something else has resurfaced or something else has triggered has been triggered in them. And I understand because it happened to me too you know like my coach cost me a small fortune (laughs) the mastermind I pay for cost me a small fortune it's like when I had you know when I was the client and I had my call with my mastermind people and with my coach I loved having the conversation I loved my coach and I loved mastermind lady but um, when it came to you know discussing okay what are the next steps how do we get this started and I heard about the fees of course like you guys like some of you guys I felt myself, you know, go gulp (laughs) and I thought, yikes. And then it was like I was frozen, you know, it was like just terror set in, panic set in, you know. Um, (laughs) And I guess what I really liked about both of these people, which is why I work with them now, is that instead of just saying, okay, then, well, all the best, you know, take care, um, see you later and letting me go, they stayed with me. And, you know, they nurtured me through that fear. They wanted to hear what was coming up for me. And then they helped me process that. And, you know, had they not done that, then I wouldn't be getting the help that I need now. And as you've seen from my business, it's just been up level after up level after up level. I mean, I've only had my coach now for, oh, what is it? Oh, the end of March. And what are we now? So the start of May. So what's that? five or six weeks I've had him five or six weeks I've been in the mastermind two weeks going on three and in that um, time so in the last two or three weeks I've made thirty five thousand dollars and I couldn't have done that had I not been working with these people and here's the other thing like I think I mentioned last time or in a previous podcast like I thought I was at the top of my game because you know um I don't know, you learn, 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 learn. It's constant learning curve in private practice, isn't it? It's a constant learning curve. And then you get to the point where you you feel like you've, you know, learned it all um, in terms of the systems and the mechanics and the approaches and the mindset stuff and things like that. And then you just kind of plateau, don't you? You just kind of plateau. And, and I think you can plateau for a little while, like it's nice to sort of coast for a little while and give yourself that break and not be under the pressure of doing all the things. But then you kind of get to a point where you you get itchy feet and you're thinking um, there must be more to <laughs> to this and then you get a coach and you realize oh my goodness <laughs> there is a whole lot more to this um, or you join a mastermind and you're like there is a whole lot more to this and so here's the thing like there's always going to be more than what you know but when you um, take that step 
and you feel supported in taking that step, then you get to access all of these other things that bring abundance into your business. And that's what I want for you too. And I'm sharing my story because I want you to know that I understand what it's like to panic when you have to spend money. I get it. I I totally get it. And so I want to share with you So my own blend of strategies that my coach, the mastermind, my previous coaches, you know, I was saying to mum last night, we're trying to figure out how much money I've spent on coaches in the last um, three years. And it was something like nearly (laughs) $80,000. But do you know what? I do that because it's not that it makes me a better businesswoman. It's that um, I love to learn more and more advanced things so that I can share them with the women in the private practice with Soul Women's Circle. Um, It also means I'm constantly upgrading the content for the class, Um, you know, the private practice with Soul class. It means that my coaching clients um, are sort of getting, you know, I'm getting this information from my coach and from groups I'm in, and I'm then able to pass it on to my clients and my clients benefit. Do you know what I mean? And that makes me a better coach because I know that that other coaches aren't giving their clients this and that's what sets me apart. So in a way, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, as someone who's recently faced the fear of investing in things, I wanted to teach you uh, how I did that, give you a a process that's um, taking a bit from everybody that's helped me invest in myself and put it together for you in a way that I hope is really beautiful, soul-driven and heart-centered so that it feels like a loving, compassionate process for you, okay? So here's the first step. The first step, if you're freaking out about investing money in your coaching or mentoring or education or PD or whatever it is for the business, first step, I'm just going to call witness it. Okay. So I just want you to witness that. And by witnessing it, I want you to, um, oh, sorry, you might want to hit pause and go and get a pen and paper because um, you'll want to jot some of these notes down um, for yourself. So do that and then come back. <laughs> okay, so the first one I'm calling is witness it. And what I'd like you to do is just, first of all, um, tune in to what you're saying to yourself, what is going through your mind when somebody says it's going to cost $10,000 to work with me and you really want to work with them and you really like them very much and you trust them and you know that they can help you. And then they say it's going to be $10,000. What comes into your mind? Okay. So that would be the first thing to notice. We're not judging or anything like that. We're not analyzing. We're just noticing what we're saying to ourselves. So for me, I was saying, I can't afford that. This is really expensive. This isn't in my budget. This isn't fair. I really want their help, but it's too expensive for me. So that was things I was saying, right? Just to give you an example there. That's the first step. Also with witnessing it, I want you to become really aware, very conscious about what you say to other people about making that investment. For example, um, let's say, you know, you tell your partner how excited you are to talk with your new supervisor or coach or mentor or whoever it is and have that, you know, conversation with them. And you're really excited about it. And then you come home that night and your partner says, how did it go? What do you say to them? Are you saying, well, I really liked him or I really liked her and we got along so well and I know that they can help me, but it's just too expensive. I can't afford it or we can't afford it or I can't take that money away from the family right now or we're not in a position like just notice what you say. Um, to other people it doesn't have to be a partner like I don't have a partner Um, but it might be a family member it might be a girlfriend boyfriend um, whoever just a friend Um, think about what you're saying to them then I want you to really witness what you feel you know what are you feeling what's the feeling that's coming up for you so for me i mean we can all say fear but take it further like define fear you know really drill down for me it was a little bit of anger like um 
angry at myself for not being in a better financial position to be able to afford it, angry at them for charging so much, um, uh, angry at the system. <laughs> um, I felt like, you know, there was a sense of unfairness, unreasonableness. I felt despair, defeated deflated like I got my hopes up that I could work with these people and then when I heard what the investment was I just I I just felt so flat all of a sudden you know I just my energy just went from being really up and high to just plummeting okay and I want you to notice what you felt within your body okay what did you feel in your body when it came to listening to the investment and thinking about the investment? What did you notice? Did you feel um, tense? Did you feel tight? Did you notice your hands clenching or your jaw clenching or you scrunching up your toes or, um, you know, what, what was going on for you physically? What did you notice in your physical body when it came to um, hearing that investment? For me, what I notice in my physical body is when I'm really excited and I'm really aligned and I'm really in tune, I'm sitting up straight and my eyes are bright and I'm smiling and, you know, I'm bubbly and stuff like that. And that was how I, that's how I was presenting on the call. And then when it got to him telling me, like my current coach, telling me what the investment was going to be, I felt my whole body kind of slump over and, you know, I'm not aware of it in the moment, obviously, but thinking about it later, that was me being very constrictive, wasn't it? I'd gone from being expansive and open all the way up to that point to then shutting myself off almost. You know, um, my shoulders came forward, my my chin went on my chest almost, like my back, my back sunk. Do you know what I mean? Like my whole body just sort of hunched over. And I know that that's very constrictive. And if that's what my body's doing, that's what my energy's doing. And that's me shutting down, shutting off. So what was your body, um, what was happening to your body when you heard about the investment? So make a note of some of those things. Step two is to acknowledge all of those things with compassion, okay? Um, I want you to imagine, so I know most of you listening are women or parents, um, and so imagine, like, what do you do to a child who's in fear? What do you do to a child who's in fear? You comfort them, right? You comfort them and you cradle them and you soothe them and you reassure them and you show them understanding. So maybe some reflection prompts could be things like, you know, um, how can I show myself compassion in this moment? How can I show myself comfort right now? What could I do or say that would be soothing for me right now? You know, we just want to try and, and settle you down, okay? Because you're probably a bit emotional, so we just want to try and settle you down. Step three is honoring things, right? Honoring it. And by this, I mean, it, you know now, okay, we've had so many podcasts on masculine and feminine energy, and we can take it even further if you want to. But just using the knowledge you have now about wounded feminine and wounded masculine, you know, that wounded masculine feels aggressive, feels angry, feels competitive, um, you know, um, feels like they're perhaps not achieving all that they're capable of achieving, things like that. Um, I want you to really think about the wounded masculine and ask, what is this energy trying to tell you? What does this energy want you to know? And how is this energy trying to get your attention? I know it's deep stuff, isn't it? I know, do you love it? I love it so much. <laughs> okay. And then let's do the same for the wounded feminine. And I'm focusing on wounded or shadow here because um, when you're in your healthy 
masculine, healthy, feminine, and you have those integrated and harmonized really beautifully, these things don't come up, right? These things only appear with the wounded or shadow energy. So now let's think about the wounded feminine for a moment. So wounded feminine doesn't want to be seen, is a bit gossipy, is a bit snipey and snarky, um, is fearful, is afraid, doesn't feel safe, thinks everything's unsafe, is afraid of her own shadow, um, not trusting at all, um, doesn't really love herself, um, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. And it's just an energy. That's all we're talking about. We're not saying it's who you are, but I want you to tune into that wounded or shadow feminine energy for a moment and ask what is this energy trying to tell you what does she want you to know how is she trying to get your attention now this is a really really interesting approach to looking at what's going on for you at a much deeper level okay how's she trying to get your attention now only you know that okay and it's okay it's safe for you to just make some notes about this and be honest with yourself and I guess step number four is you know to heal it okay and healing it for me This is what I would suggest and you might have your own way of healing it. But for those of you who need a way, what works for me is to connect in with my heart and ask for guidance. Okay, so the way that I do that is I take a moment, you know, when it's appropriate and I'll close my eyes and I'll just settle my breath down. And then I like to place my hand on my heart while I'm settling my breath and then when I'm ready I will just in my mind ask a question you know um, what do I need to know about taking this next step and I'll allow myself to just listen to the guidance that comes through okay that's it the reason that this is so powerful is because we're dropping out of ego right? Ego is that fear-based thinking where we're trying to protect ourselves from risk and worry and threats of danger and stuff like that. We're just moving out of that space back down into our heart space. You might call it your soul. You might want to um, connect in in your own way with source or spirit. Um, I know recently I spoke about um, the study I'm doing at the moment about um, uh, Mary Magdalene as you know and feminist theology and a few of you have written emails to me about connecting with the energy of Mary Magdalene so maybe that's what you want to do she's all about love too what would she say to you about taking this next step so ask the question allow the guidance to come through Open your eyes and write down the guidance, okay? Just write it down. And what I would suggest is this guidance that comes through is going to be very, very powerful for you. And what can be really helpful when you're first starting to tune into your heart or your soul or that that inner guidance Um I would suggest maybe you jump on Word or you go into Canva and you make yourself, you know, a really beautiful um, iPhone screen or Android screen for your phone and you write the guidance down so that you see it all the time or you make it the wallpaper for your computer or you just print it off and pop it in a really pretty frame and keep it on your desk so that you can see it all the time and allow this to become, you know, you living in alignment with your soul. I truly believe that you can have a private practice with soul and that's why I share with you these strategies and that's why I share with you these insights. I believe when you can learn how to connect in with your soul for business things like what we're talking about today, that's how you become more aligned with your values, more aligned with the things that are important to you, a fuller embodiment of your purpose for being here on this planet 
and better able, better equipped to be able to serve all the people that you really, 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 really want to serve, but who aren't getting the benefit of your guidance right now because you're stuck in your own fear and you're stuck in your own way. Does this make sense? So this is my process. This is my approach. And this works. Okay. It's worked for me and I haven't looked back. And I know that this process can work for you too. Please, please, please keep this episode somewhere safe because there will be times whether you're starting a private practice or whether you're already in one or you're going through an up level, there will be times when you experience fear because fear is part of running a business, okay? And I want you to feel supported. And this is one way that I can give you that support, okay? I want to honor you for even listening to this episode today and being brave enough to explore with me what working through a fear could look like for you so that you can unlock your true potential, not only in your business, but in your life. I love this work so, 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 so much. And I'm really excited to hear how this process works for you. So if you try it, do let me know. Um, And if there's ever anything you need, I'm here for you. Okay. Have a beautiful Wednesday, everybody. Such a powerful episode. (laughs) (sighs) Breathe. (laughs) Such a powerful episode. Have a beautiful Wednesday, everybody. And I'll talk to you later. I love you so much. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast today. If you're looking for clarity, if you need help with branding, your processes and bringing everything into alignment with your soul's purpose for your private practice, head to the show notes and click the link for more information about the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group. You are going to love it. I can't wait to see you in there. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.